Hi everybody. So, I'm not sure if you read the comments or not, but really you should, because if you're not, you're missing a trick. It's full, or the comments are full of great tips and tricks and information and ideas. So if you're not reading them, take the time to read them. And there's one particular one I want to point out to you, and that's a guy called Stephen Evans. Stephen posted something about the history of the Ugrinsky turbine. Turns out it wasn't a wind turbine to begin with. To begin with, it was a hydroelectric turbine. And there was actually a book published in 1950, and Stephen gives the details of it, but I've written it down here. Free Flow Hydroelectric Power Plants of Low Power, which was written in the 1950s and explores the Ugrinsky wind turbine. And, and lots of people have been saying, well, that's pretty awesome, Rob, but how would that do under water? And of course, I've always been thinking about it as water as well. And with Stephen's post, what more can you do? You've got to set it up and see how it does with water. Okay, so I've rigged it up in this really simple cradle here because there's two things that can happen here. Either it'll work on the mass of water, so we'll basically dump a bucket of water on it, or it can work like a turbine, at least that's the thought, in which case we want a spray of water. So a very simple setup. I mean, it's handmade in the UK from quality materials, isn't it? <laughs> If you took this home and it was a bit of macaroni art, you can guarantee your mum would put it on the fridge. Anyway, let's try it with a bucket of water. Okay, most assuredly that works. Now let's try it with a spray. <laughs> okay, apart from dousing me completely, that's impressive. I guess that's the flywheel effect. It just continues turning. So Egrinsky, well, he was a Russian, so you'd expect everything to be written in Russian. But I found this Russian patent in English describing a Grinsky turbine being used for domestic generation. So it's pretty easy to come across English translations of Russian documents, both the academic press and the patents, if you want to explore this further. Even our simple experiment showed some very interesting things, which is the way it is with this stuff. If you do the experiments, you start to notice stuff and you can start to think about stuff. So we saw that flywheel effect. The immediate thought is those end circles will oh, make them heavier. Yes, they'll have a greater starting torque, but in water, that's not such an issue. And then, of course, they continue with their inertia to rotate because they're a flywheel. So there's a possible... Um, combination there of Ugrinsky with flywheel under maybe a jet pressure. Because somebody did mention putting this above a rocket stove, which I thought was fantastic. I mean, clearly we can't do that with the plastic one. We're going to have to make a metal one. But if you do that and you get the jet from the rocket stove to give it a nudge, of course, the flywheel option is going to keep it turning. So a ton of exciting things that can be done with the Ugrinsky. Read around it, find out some more information, do your experiments, have a look and see what results you've got, and then see what you're going to build. It's another one of those examples of there's so much to be discovered if you get up and do it. Okay, so it will definitely turn. Now, in the report, it says that the Ugrinsky style is pretty high torque in wind, so certainly in water, that torque is going to be, well, huge. Now, I've got to get hold of a copy of that book and have a read about it just to get some idea of what kind of power we can expect from it. But we can see it working as a water wheel. And it does raise the question, if it does it like that in a water wheel, what about stick it in the waves? Or, or even just stick it in a current, putting it in a river completely submerged so it's actually in a current. What would that kind of do? So, like so many things, you answer one question and it raises a whole bunch of others but we certainly know that that will turn quite effectively in water and that's very interesting. So we've got to thank Stephen for posting that really and thank all the other guys who asked for a demonstration of it being in water. It certainly works. I would think 
let's see what it does in a current, let's see what it does in the waves and explore it a bit further since it seems to be a very promising and interesting design and once we get over the geometry that we did in 1754 it's actually pretty easy to make. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the update video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.